hang out with you here is going to be the word uh, convocation. The word convocation is the Hebrew word mikra. Something called out. It means something called out. That is, here we go, a public meeting. Something called out. A public meeting. The act, the person, or the place. Or pass. Also, a rehearsal. When we come together today, we are rehearsal. We are rehearsing the eternal race. Mm -hmm. We are rehearsing the eternal rest that we have in Yeshua. Okay. The assembly calling communication with people. What I want to draw out the definition from other definition of Mikra. But it says a public meeting. The Shabbat is a statute. You will be been called out to leave our assembly, leave our home, leave wherever we may be at, to come together to a what? Public meeting. Unless, unless your house is the place that people come to. For that public meeting. Because he's some, some he can get spiritual. They get spiritual with their rest and self and rest. Okay. Yeah, you can't you know what key element. In my in my understanding, we rest in him on this day. And part of the rest in him is we rest or cease from our normal daily activities. We are to cease from our normal, normal work about day, our normal work about what we normally do. The Shabbat is supposed to be some, the Shabbat is supposed to be different from any other day of the week. The scripture says that. We are supposed to, now don't take it the wrong way. Please take it, have my heart, have my heart trying to say it. We're supposed to live holy every day of the week. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But if there's going to be a day that you're going to try to make sure you live holy, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, <that could> be. <laughs> why do I say that? Because the scripture says, keep it holy. Now, the most I ain't say, okay, after you keep that day holy, mm -mm. go six other days and live like you want to live. Mm -mm. No, he's not saying that. But this day will be set apart, so it will be different. You still in Monday through, or Sunday through Friday. Please take the time. I'm not encouraged about it still. But that's it. <laughs> If you feel wow. that you got a sin, wow. Sunday through Friday, but you don't, make that clear. Make no, that clear. Mm. Mm -mm. My, my, my. Right now, just on the Sabbath. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Now, y'all know I ain't encouraged about the sin. Oh, I know. That's fine. All I'm trying to bring out the point is something for me different about today. Yeah, we, you, did, huh? we did enough of that before we came back to him. <laughs> Some of us. Because see, now, I know that may sound weird, that, and, that, and like I said, I'm not encouraged nobody to say to do wrong with anything on God. Then. But it's a beautiful picture, if I may say it like this, of the rest that we have in Yeshua. Yeah. Yeah. Because when we step into what, what some of the theological circle call the 7,000th year, that's the year that we be, that we, we parked in there and wait for the Messiah to come. And when he comes, he's going to give that eternal rest to his, to his children. And how many of y'all know that in that eternal rest, there, there'll be a ceasing 
ceasing from sin or ceasing from any kind of secular worldly activities. Resting in him, mm -hmm. right? So that so it's like almost six thousand years. I mean, word like that of having a, of somebody living, you know, not necessarily sitting every day, day all the years, but, but that's normal life, normal activity, normal way of living, going about life, you know, so forth. But when that seven thousand year when he come or that we're in now when he returns, we're gonna go into that eternal rest where that will not happen anymore like it was those six thousand years. Make sense? Yeah. So now, in this six-day week, God forbid that we live like hoodlums and live like heathens, because we don't supposed to do that. But, not but as if you can do that, the seventh day is supposed to be different. The seventh day. Supposed to be kept holy. So I guess this is going to be a little opening that thank God that we're here Amen. on the seventh day. Amen. Uh, thank God for those that may be watching my Facebook, watching my Zoom. Um, I know y'all heard me say, share that the mikra uh, means a public meeting, public gathering. So there ain't no curveball. There ain't no, it ain't no uh, trying to throw on your weight. No, I won't do that. But um, I definitely am grateful that we are definitely keeping the Sabbath here. And those are watching my way on Facebook, Zoom, whatever you're watching that. If you're watching it today, we pray for you keeping the Sabbath um, or making some kind of attempt, especially Israel. The Israel is commanded to do it. So all are invited to do it. Don't get it twisted. Keep the Sabbath from us. Amen. Testimony time is now open. Amen. Have a tes testimony. Come on. In the absence of Mother Frances. Amen. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. All blessed saints, we give all the glory and the honor to the Most High. I can definitely say, man, he is working in my life. Amen. He's working in my life. I started my new job yesterday. Oh, amen. I am a pharmacy technician. <laughs> you are a pharmacy technician? Uh-huh. Amen. In training. I've got my license and everything. Can I say it like this and you don't be mad? No. A legal one. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> hey, absolutely. You got that one right. <laughs> absolutely. Amen. Uh, yeah. Amen. But he's working so much and doing so much that what I asked in petitions at the start of this Hebrew New Year Amen. have been answered. Amen. Have been answered. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, yeah, hallelujah. Last Tuesday, I got the stem cell injection in my knee. Okay. They told me I wouldn't feel any results for two weeks. Uh-uh. I felt it the next day. Amen. I felt it the next day. So he's, he's, he's awesome. You know, we've got this foot going to get fixed, and that's going to be some pretty major work getting done on this mm -hmm. left foot. But that's going to work out, too. That's working out, too. Hallelujah. You know, because he's just, he's ordering steps yeah. every single day. Yeah. Every single day. Mm -hmm. And as much sickness that's been going on in the building where I, I was still working, because I didn't get an opportunity to give notice, but we're going to work that one out, too. Um... People are out with COVID, they've been sick with this, they've been sick with that. Um, individual that you guys know, but I'm not saying it on the air, has COVID, caught it after Christmas at work. Wow. But he's doing well, so Amen. keep Amen. him in prayer. Um, but it's, it's just walking in his world, mm. walking his path, you got to go there. Those that aren't there, you've got to go there because he's going to open your eyes to things that are have been in front of you that you didn't see because you weren't living right. Mm -hmm. You weren't living the way that he ordained and commanded that we walk. And I, I can't say enough about him. I can't say enough about him, but I speak on him all the time, and it doesn't matter who I run into. Hey, do you know him? 
So, you know, I don't talk to anybody anyway. That's just me. But I give him all the glory and the honor and the praise. And I don't know what my schedule's going to be, so I'm going to be here as often as I can be here. Amen. You know, because I'm a little man on the totem pole. <laughs> but it's that way. So we're going to see what happens. But, you know, just keep me in prayer that everything's going to roll the way that he wants it to roll. And I know that it will. But just know that when I'm not here, you guys are always in my heart and in my prayers. So Shabbat Shalom, family. Awesome. Praise God. I ain't we gotta hang out. Ain't, ain't it somehow God can you can see what you see? Ain't somehow God turn your life around. Oh yeah. Turn your life around. Um I cause I that don't mean that I would throw her on the bus because I would have to throw myself on the bus. No. I, I, I used to, I used to be a neighborhood farmer. <laughs> the illegal neighborhood farmer. Yeah, and because of my <laughs> ex, I was too. <laughs> <laughs> So, so, and, and just her testifying and what she shared openly, that's why I said what I said, because she just testified to you know, her past. So now we thank God that she is legal. <laughs> Working in the pharmaceutical church. <laughs> <laughs> amen. 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 I said, God will do it. One thing he, he, he will do it. He, he will do it. Amen. 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 Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. I do stand and give honor to God um, and my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I just thank him for another opportunity. He yeah. brought me through the year, mm. looking at a brand new year and expecting to go through this still blessing and praising God. And just want to say that it is something to stand up and uh, testify okay. for that we are still here. Amen. 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 Testify, testify, testify. Shabbat shalom. I think it's all. Amen. Shabbat shalom. I thank the Lord. I'm here. Amen. I'm here. Yes. I'm here. 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 I just want to thank God too. Uh, somebody said this earlier. Oh, I know Sam was talking about how um, you know people will come up to you and and um, um, seemingly nothing that you're doing sets them off. Mm. And uh, and he said, you know, I'm just patient. I'm like, I have been, you know, as most of us, you know, have grown. And uh, and he said, and, you know, it, it kind of upsets me, but I don't change. I don't exude another presence. <laughs> and then somebody else will come along and be all friendly and helpful and whatever. So it uh, reminded me that this week um, we had a meeting. We have four meetings a month with the ladies. And um, we had this scheduled meeting. And, and uh, I was going to pick one of our ladies up because they have a car to take to the other house. And, she said, um, I'm not coming. I'm not coming. Uh, I don't want to hear about whatever our topic was. Uh, I want to talk about it. I want to think about it. Wow. What did I do? Uh -huh. What did I do? <laughs> OK. <laughs> you know, I won't pick you up. And then, so the next day, I swing by, because I know something's, something's wrong. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I said, so you know, why were you so angry yesterday? I said, did I do something to, to make you angry? And, and she whips out this envelope um, uh, and says, I got this the other day. So it's from my, I won't say who, but from my such and such. And and uh, I haven't even opened it yet because I don't know what's in it and I don't want to think about it. And it was something totally right. out of my control. Yeah. It had nothing to do with me. Mm -hmm. And yet, you know, you know how we can mm -hmm. escalate the yes, situation? Yes. Mm -hmm. And so, anyway, we kind of talked about how she might handle that. But um, it was just a, a, another confirmation that when he tells you to be patient mm -hmm. and to, uh, what does he say? Uh, uh, 
that. But uh, the, the Torah gives you minuscule, you know, uh, things to do that change your life and elevate your presence in other people's lives. Mm. And any, anywhere you begin to read, there is an instruction that can nest within you so that you have it when you need it. I just thank God that he's um, a father and a teacher and he's patient with us. Amen. Amen. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. <laughs> oh, she done gave her the mic. Yeah, okay. I, I guess I have a testimony and I don't know it. God is so <laughs> awesome. He just continues to bless us and um, by giving us parts of his character that we can enact in the world. And Angela, I kind of agree with what you were saying because even when we don't think that, um, well, well, first of all, what I heard from you is something that, you know, when I'm working on uh, the prayer warrior, and you know what I'm talking about, the prayer warrior training, is one of the agreements you're going to agree to is let's not take everything so personal, okay? Because everything doesn't, uh, just because somebody's giving you something and how you might perceive it, it doesn't mean that it's directed at you, their intention or anything. So let's not take, let's get God's character. Imagine if he took everything we did and said personally, like this is an affront against me, even though it actually is. He said he gave us oh, his son to rectify all that stuff. So continue to come to me. He gives us an opportunity to turn, and we operate in his name, and we operate in his character. We can continue to turn, and this is what we need to, when God, uh, when somebody, that's what really turning that other cheek is. Angela, you just turned the other cheek. You just operated in a principle of Torah because you didn't take it personally and say, why is she coming off at me like this? What you did was, let me go by here the other day and find out what's going on. I know if I've done something to her, I want to make it right. And if I know I, I don't think I've done anything to her, so let me see what's wrong so maybe I can help her get it right. And I think that's the opportunity that we have to give each other when, when we want to ex uh, expand God's character in the earth. It's not just what we talk, it's what we do and how we receive things and what we're gonna, how we're going to respond to things. So I thank God that just, you know, reminded me and sat with me and said, yes, right. We got to stop taking everything so personal when we're dealing with each other. Because here is how we, it's the practice of how we treat each other in our, in our, in our community, in the greater community, is where we're going to use it and exercise it. So let's stop doing that in here so out there it becomes so much easier to not take it all personal. All right? And then, and then take the next step. Right? When we're not going to take it personal, let's make it make the, the action personable and say, what can I do to help you? Because I know this, all this energy could not be directed at me. <laughs> what can I do to make it better for you? What can I do to, to you know, enrich your life or change? Even if it's just sitting here praying with you, even if it's just for you to vent, how can we turn this situation around to make it you know, glorify God and we can exemplify his character, even how you deal with it? Because what she was saying is, I have a situation I don't want to talk about, I don't want to deal with it, it's going to bring me heartache. So now how do we help them move into the next step? That's glorifying God in the earth. You don't have to run away from this particular problem. God is going to give you a, a, a method of escape, and it's, it's not always denial. It might be denial for right now, but you've got to move through the situation where the, a letter can't just be a trigger for you. <laughs> you know. So we've got to it, you know, walk that out so that they see us God on the earth as his ambassadors and walking through that. So I thank you for reminding us, reminding me of that, that that's what we need to do and, um, and how we operate with each other. And that's what it's all about, how we extend our, our community uh, into the greater community uh, of faith and, and to the nations to give them example of how it is to be different. We're all not so prickly. We are all open to um, give and receive, you know, God's love. Amen. Shabbat shalom to everyone. Shabbat shalom to everyone. I do got to give on to the Most High God, the true and living God, His Son, our Messiah, Yeshua, the Messiah, the Christ. Thank God for my wife um, at the moment who's not here. Thank God for Rosh Hakim and all of the saints that are present um, and those that are watching by way of Facebook, by way of Zoom. 
thank God for you as well. Um, I'm glad to be in the house of the Most High once again. Um, I got to be transparent. Um, that's the type of person I am. The young folk would say, uh, not these young folk, this generation would say something like this, I'm feeling a certain way. I'm feeling a certain way. Y'all heard that before? I'm feeling a certain way, y'all. My friend, My friend. That's all I'm going to say. I'm lying. I lied. That ain't all I'm going to say. But my friend. I mean, I don't. Amen. Amen. Definitely keep um, keep Pastor Maria prayers and her family. Amen. I'm here with a yarmulke on my head. And don't get it twisted. Y'all know the Most High is in charge. <laughs> the Most High designed and orchestrated everything. Don't get it twisted. This is just me feeling a certain way. I'm here today uh, keeping the Shabbat because the Lord had already predestined it. I'm here today as knowing and believing I'm a Hebrew Israelite. Believer, most important of all. Because the Lord had predestined it. Wearing sit seats and yarmulkes because the Lord had predestined it. Thank God. That's most important of all. But one thing I don't believe I will ever forget is who God had in place. be used by him to help guide me this way. Never. So when I see you all, of course God is in control. God has already set it up. God is, is already done, if I may say it like this, most high. It's already done in the plan of God. But when I see you all, I can't help but look at the fruit of him, my friend. Because I know how it started with me. And I remember the words that I heard him share to me, to my Pastor Green. And I was already a believer. I was already saved. If I hadn't heard not one Hebrew word, not one Hebrew subject, <laughs> <laughs> Come on now, don't get it twisted. If I hadn't heard one Hebrew word, one Hebrew subject, one black people in the Bible teaching, if I had never heard none of that, my soul was right. Don't get it twisted now. Don't get it twisted. My soul was right. I was loving before. I was loving the Lord on fire for Lord. Before I heard about the Hebrew word or blacks in the Bible and all that kind of stuff. I definitely have to say, sitting at his feet and the Lord using him has tremendously blessed my life in more than one way. And I call myself trying to be one to give a person their flowers while they're living. I call
call myself trying to be that. So amen. That's my testimony. I thank God. Any more testimony? I don't want to cut nobody off. We're going to our praise and worship. I want to cut nobody off. Um, yes. Come on, Malak. Thank you, dear. Malak's going to read the um, Chaim Torah. Prayer for everybody that's on watching my way of Facebook and Zoom. You're able to hear her. And I believe that the sound is much better because sometimes I go back and listen to, and that was an awesome mess you did, Malak, too. Oh, yeah. That was that, 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 you know. Malak, you be dropping bombs, too. I like I, that, 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 that was, that was, good. go ahead, go ahead. I'm gonna <laughs> okay, well, um, the fame of the name is the Kaim Torah, mm -hmm. and uh, it seems so appropriate for what you're talking about with uh, Pastor Green passing. Um, so I'm, I'm reading it kind of in that context. God did not arbitrarily or capriciously decide to harden Pharaoh's heart. From the outset, he explained that he intended to make his contest with the Egyptian pantheon into a public affair. He said, against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. Exodus 12:12. 12, 12. He intended to use Egypt as a theater in which he could establish his name, that is, his character, and his identity and reputation in the eyes of his people Israel, in the eyes of all Egypt, and in the eyes of the whole world. In the Semitic sense, to declare one's name means to broadcast a person's fame and reputation. Mm. To declare God's name means to reveal who God is, that is, to glorify him. It has nothing to do with pronouncing or not pronouncing the sacred name of God. Exactly what some. you exactly you listen, what you were talking about. Did you type that way quick when you heard <laughs> 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 right. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Say that again. I like read that line again. That's it that. has nothing to do with wow. pronouncing or not pronouncing the sacred name Ain't of God. Enough. We're just talking about it. Yeah. Go ahead, Malaya. It has everything to do with revealing God's person and character to the world. Beautiful, beautiful. So, Exodus 7, 5 says, The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I stretch out my hand on Egypt and bring out the sons of Israel from their midst. The Lord used the plagues, the signs, the wonders, and even the redemption of Israel to show his power and to proclaim his name through all the earth. He made his grand entrance onto the stage of world history and sent a message to the whole world. And the message is, I exist I am God, and there is none like me. He sent a message to the false gods and the idols, proving that he alone is God and there is none other. Israel is the trophy of his victory. The demonstration succeeded. The decimation of Egypt made an impact on the world, and the name of the Lord has never since been forgotten. In Jericho, the Canaanites were still talking about what God did in Egypt 40 years earlier, the Philistines were still talking about it 200 years later, and we are still talking about it today. Yes, amen. Amen, and beautiful. So you, you reminisced, uh, Nasi, about uh, sitting at the feet of Pastor Green, and uh, I don't think we have told the story in a while about how we managed to get there. Mm. Um, we were worshiping at another congregation, and uh, Moses saw that at EWC, there was going to be somebody talking about holistic health. Okay, I didn't know that. So we came for that teaching and were intrigued by the Hebrew mm -hmm. that we heard and learned. And uh, within, I don't know, two or three months, I guess, um, we had become members of that congregation. Amen. So... Um, there was something in here that reminded me of it. Um, in the Semitic sense, to declare one's name means to broadcast a person's fame and reputation. And so, you know, when 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 uh, a saint or a, a believer passes, you know, what we remember is how he glorified the name. Mm. And so, you know, we 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 thank God that he was. Pastor Green was in place oh, for each of us to receive. Amen. Beautiful. Amen. Beautiful. Amen. Amen. Beautiful. 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 Amen.
Amen. Well, this is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that Yahweh has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will enter His gate with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter His court with praise. I will say that it's the day that Yahweh has made. I will rejoice for you. He has made me glad, He has made me glad. I will go for He has made me glad. He has made me glad, He has made me glad. I will go for He has made me glad. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. Yeah, 
Hallelujah. He's worthy of all praise. He's worthy of all glory. He's worthy of all the honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good and your mercy endureth forever. 
How many know He's good? Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. For people. People from every nation and color, from generation to generation, we worship you. Good and your mercy endure it forever. Oh, yes, he is. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure it forever. Come on, sing it out loud. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure it forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure it forever. Come on, people. People from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. We worship you for who you are. You are good. You are good all the time, all the time. You are good. You are good all the time, all the time. You are good. You are good all the time, all the time. You are good. People, people from every nation and come. From generation to generation, we worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you for who you are. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you for who you are. So you are good. You are good all the time, all the time. You are good. You are good all the time, all the time. You are good. You are good all the time, all the time. You are good. Hallelujah. 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 We have come into this house, gathered in his name, to worship you. We have come into this house, gathered in his name. Yeah, 
escorted by God's will. Concentrate on Him and worship Him. Come on, try to forget about yourself. And forget about our sins. Concentrate on Him. Let's forget about our sin. Concentrate on Him and worship Him. Come on, forget about yourself. Come on. Try to forget about what you're going through. Try to forget about even your your illness and your sickness and whatever you whatever you whatever in your mind is. I'm know it may not be easy to do but let's try to forget about us let's try to forget about our care so y'all heard me say earlier that I'm feeling a certain way But I want to even try to not even think about that. And focus on Him. Come on, put our attention to Him. Tell yourself, I'm going to think about Him. You can say it inwardly and outwardly, but tell your soul this round. I'm going to think about him. I'm going to concentrate on Yahweh. I'm going to concentrate on him being the true and living God. There is no other Elohim but you, Yahweh. You alone are the creator of the heavens and the earth, Yahweh. You are the creator of things seen and unseen, Yahweh.
Come on, talk to him. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you. We bless you for your presence. We bless you, Lord, for a sweet visitation. Oh, glory. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, glory.
matter what you're dealing with. Hallelujah. Come on, sing it. Oh, you know he's been good to you. Come on, sing to him. Come on, he's been good to you. Sing to him. I just want to, and I just want to be my friend. Come on, come on, there you go, come on, come on, come on, amen, 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 that's what I'm talking about, give him a hand, he's going to try, okay, he's going to try, amen, 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 that's what I'm talking about right there, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me get, that's what I'm talking about, amen. Amen, 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 amen. Shema Yisrael. I got me mad at the floor. Shema Yisrael. Yahweh, Elohim, Yahweh, Elohim, Yahweh, eh, come. come on, sing it. Shema Yisrael, Yahweh, Elohim, Yahweh. Come on, sing it. Shema Yisrael, Yahweh Elohim, Yahweh Elohim, Yahweh. Come on, the Baruch come now. Baruch, yeah. Baruch, Baruch. Come on. 
Shema Yisrael, Yahweh Elohim, Yahweh. Everybody knows it's the son of Elohim. 
Everybody knows we just don't hello. Guess what? Oh, 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 everybody needs to be safe in his name. Everybody needs to be safe in his name. You know what? I pray that you don't wait till it's too late. Pray that you don't wait till it's too late. Cause everybody needs to shoot one. Everybody needs to shoot one. Everybody needs to shoot one. Everybody knows it's the son of Elohim. Everybody knows it's the son of Elohim. Everybody needs to be saved in his name. Everybody needs to be saved. I pray that you don't wait until it's too late. I pray that you don't wait until it's too late. Cause everybody needs to shoot for Everybody needs to shoot for Everybody needs to shoot for their lives. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's give our young man a good job. Amen, amen. Excellent job. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Giving praise to the Most High God, uh, Yahweh Elohim, my Lord and my Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach. <clears throat> Just thanking Yahweh Elohim for another, another day, another day alive, another opportunity to worship him and to praise him and to give him thanks and glory. Um, a couple weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, I was driving home from here in this great city of Petersburg, and somebody, and somebody Mario carded me. Mario carded me. What that mean? That means somebody left something in the middle of the road and it damaged my car in Petersburg, this great city. I think it was somebody from Petersburg. Anyway, I'm on 95, doing my, doing my, uh, doing the speed limit, and it was something in the middle lane on 95 in the city of Petersburg. And it damaged my car. Mm. Don't, don't, don't. You, you good. I'm not looking for an apology. I'm just sharing my testimony. <laughs> How Yahweh Elohim got me from Petersburg to the front of my house mm -hmm. because the damage was a hole in my gas tank. Mm -hmm. So I'm driving, and I hit the thing. I was like, what the heck was that? Olivia's in the car with me. And two minutes later, I start smelling fuel. Like, that can't be coming from me. Like, there's a tanker truck in front of me. Maybe he spilled some gas. So I get in front of the tanker truck and I still smell it. I open the window. Strong is, it's a very strong smell. Aroma. Olivia's like, oh, that stinks. I'm like, yep. So I get, literally, I get to my street and the gas light came on. I just filled up the, the night before because that's what I do. I fill up before I come this way so I don't have to do it, you know, coming or going. Mm -hmm. Tank empty. I get home, smell around. Fuel is like leaking from the passenger side coming from my car. But praise Yahweh Elohim that I was not stranded on the side of the road. Yeah. Praise Yahweh Elohim. Somebody did not flick a cigarette butt out their window and they get up underneath my car and I'll be on fire. Just praise Yahweh Elohim for all of the Amen. all of the things that all of the positivity that came out of it, right? So I think y'all know me enough to know by now that I don't typically panic or get, you know, really upset too much, too often. But just being able to exhibit a character of not panicking and staying calm in front of my child was the greatest thing that I could have exhibited. You know, most people could have been freaking out. Like, you know, pull off to the side of the road, wasting gas, Whatever, whatever. But Yahweh Elohim got me to my destination safely. Hallelujah. And we'll worry about the car later. You know what I'm saying? 
safety and health is, is always, always key, top of the line. All right. So this week, this week's Torah portion is coming from uh, Shemot, or Exodus chapter 6, and it goes through uh, chapter 9, and it exhibits the different plagues that the Most High put upon the children or the Egyptians. And in this Torah portion, there was a few things that I, I noticed and kind of looked into, and that is, um, so we know that these plagues were in essence, a smack in the face to the idol gods that were worshipped in Egypt, okay? The Nile and the, the lice and the boils and all of, the, all of these things. But what I did not know, and it, it would have to take me to, to research further, but what I, I picked up so far is that my original thinking was just because the king or the pharaoh at the time was in this location, you would think that all the people in that location worship the same idol. But that's not true. Okay. So when you look at or when you do the study in it, right, I, I'm assuming around this time, you will see that each state, so to speak, was worshiping a different god. And through the course of time, it all kind of got mixed and blended together. All right. But this, but what we're seeing here, right, the, the importance of why. Moses had to go to Pharaoh and speak to him a certain type of way. When he went in there, he said, I am the Lord God of the Hebrews. There's a reason why he did that, because all the people, Egyptians in that town or in that country at the time, it would have been different states that worshiped different gods. So he had to specifically spell that out. All right. And each one of the plagues attacked a different god for a, from a different state or city. Okay, in essence, saying whatever city this is, whatever God you worship in, I'm in effect greater than that God, which we already know that. Okay, so this is what we're seeing Yahweh Elohim making a very targeted attack on these various idols. All right, and the second thing that I noticed was that not only, well, it's three things, not only were the plagues in essence, a showing for the Egyptians to know that God was God. It was also a showing to let the Israelites know that God was God. Because when you look at the conversation that was had between Moses and the children of Israel, not really a conversation, it was more so a telling, because Moses told them who God was, and at that moment, they could have packed up their things and walked out. If you read the story, he was telling them, look, I'm the Lord God of Abraham. I'm the one that basically brought you here, and I'm basically trying to take you out now. If you read earlier in, in I think it's like in uh, chapter 6, kind of around verse 2 to 6, somewhere in that area. If you read it, you'll see that the conversation basically was, comp it was like, hey, I'm your God. Are y'all ready to leave? And they was so wearied with their, uh, their current situation that they were not even hearing Moses when they told him that, which is the reason why Moses went to Pharaoh. Okay? So what am I saying? I'm saying don't let your situations hold you down so much that you're not able to at least see who God is. All right? God has gotten us this far being exactly who he is, right? Changing, in us, changing in us, molding us, fixing us, and putting us in a position. But don't let our future or our past successes hold us from experiencing future success as well. In other words, don't remain stagnant, all right? God is bigger than that problem that he brought you out before, and he can do it again, okay? Or where, whatever growth you're looking for in whatever area you're looking for it in, God can catapult you in that area as well. Hallelujah. So I believe I was out a week. Yeah, so it was men's the last time I was here. So if you're a man, and we come to Torah, it's a men's aliyah. If you like to come to Torah, men, please do so at this time. I'm going to need three volunteers, three readers uh, from Exodus chapter 6, verses 2 through 8. All right, uh, Sister Dara, I need another reader for the half Torah. Ezekiel 28, verses 25 and 26. 
All right, Father Sam. Did I see your hand, Mulat? All right, can I get you to read Luke 11, 14 through 20? All right, so we have Sister Adara on Exodus or Shemot chapter 6, verse 2 through 8. Brother Sam is on Ezekiel chapter 28, verses 25 through 26. And uh, Mora Malak is on Luke chapter 11, verse 14 through 20. Hallelujah. Barku et Adonai Hamvarak. Barku et Adonai Hamvarak. Bless Hashem, the, the blessed, blessed one. Baruch Adonai Hamvarak Leolam Vayed. Baruch Adonai Hamvarak Leolam Vayed. Bless is Hashem, Hashem, the blessed, blessed one, one for all for eternity. Baruch Atai Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam. Yashir Baha Benu Miko Haamin. Venetan Lenu et Sorato. Baruch Atai Adonai Notin Ha Torah. Bless are, are you, Hashem, Hashem our, our God, God, King of the universe, who selected us from all the peoples and gave us this Torah. Bless are, are you, Hashem, giver of the Torah. Torah. Amen. Amen. Chapter 6, verse 2 through 8 in the Hebrew. Vadaber Elohim El Moshe. Vayomer Elav Ani Adoni. Vayera El Avraham El Yitzchak. El Yaakov. El Shadi. Ushmi Adonai. Lo Nodati Bahem. Vagam Hakim Moti. Et Boriti. Tom. La tate Bahem et Ret Kanaan et Ret Magu Raim Esher Garu Va. Vagam Ali Shemati et Naachat Bene Israel Esher Mitraim Maa Nidim Otam. Vait Kor et Briti. The king Imor leave ne Israel, Ani Adonai Bahot Zeti, Et Chem Mitachat, Siv Lot Mitraim, Vahit Zalti, Et Chem. May Avodatam Magalti, Et Chem, Bis Ruah, Untu Ya Kuvish Fatim Gadolim. Lachach ti et chem li lam va yiti le chem le lohim va datem chi ani adoni elohechem hamotzi et chem mitachat sivlot mitraim vahe zeti et chem el haaret esher nasati et yardi la tate utam the Avraham, the Yitzchak, U la Ul ya Achov, Vadatati, Ota, Ota, Bechem, Murasha, Ali, Adonai. Exodus, chapter 6, verse 2. God spoke to Moses and said to him, I am Hashem. I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as El Shaddai. But my name, Hashem, I did not make myself known to him, to them. Moreover, I established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their sojourning, in which they sojourned. Moreover, I have the groan of the children of Israel, whom... Ew. 
Egypt, Egypt and slaves, and I remembered my com and my covenant. Therefore, say to the children of Israel, I am Hashem, and I shall take you out from under the burdens of Egypt. I shall rescue you from their service. I shall redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. Amen. Ezekiel chapter 28, verses 25 through 26. Thus said the Lord God, when I shall have gathered the house of Israel from the people among whom they are scattered, they shall be sanctified in them in the sight of the heathen. Then shall they dwell in their land that I have that I have given to my servant Jacob. Verse twenty six. And they shall dwell safely therein, and shall build houses and plant vineyards. Yeah, they shall dwell with confidence when I have executed judgment upon all those that despise them round about them and they shall know that I am the Lord their God. Amen. Luke 11 14 through 20 Now Yeshua was driving out a demon and it was mute. When the demon had gone out the mute one spoke and the crowds were amazed. But some, some among them said by Zeelzebul, the ruler of all demons, he drives out demons. Others, testing him, were demanding from him a sign from heaven. But Yeshua, knowing their thoughts, said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is destroyed, and a house against a house falls. Now, if Satan is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? Well, you say, by Beelzebul, I drive out the demons. But if by Beelzebul I drive out demons, by whom do your sons drive them out? For this reason they will be your judges. But if by the finger of God I drive out demons, then the kingdom of God has come to you. Blessed are you, Hashem, our God, King of the universe, who gave us the Torah of truth and implanted eternal life within us. Blessed are you, Hashem, giver of the Torah. Amen. Please stand for the singing of this is Torah. Those who are able. This is the Torah that Moses made to the children of Israel. Upon the command of the Lord to Moses, the children of Israel. For those who rest, children of Israel, and its supporters are priests, worthy children of Israel. They play the ring of blessedness and all its paths of peace. Children of Israel, this is the Torah. That most is faithful for 
May he who bless our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, bless you. Tamias, son of Hadar, bless you. Uh, God, son of Joseph, amen. Amen. Had to, had to let it in, y'all. Yeah, Tamias is my godson. Amen. So, so God, son of Joseph, uh, I don't miss my whole blessing, though. <laughs> Amen. Uh, hey, miss ya. Yeah. Son of a good name. Amen. Amen. For Aliyah to the Torah. Reversing the Shabbat. And the Torah. May he bless you that your dreams will manifest. That you dream about concerning him, concerning your career, concerning your life, concerning your children, concerning your wife, and your wife and your children when they come. May he bless you with long life, good health. And uh, you'll be able to uh, rock your grandchildren. Let the Most High come back first. Tell them the good old stories about how mom and dad played a role in your life. And you tell them the good old stories about, you know, how your grandparents played a role in your life. You know, you just tell you. And may, may you get a chance to do that in your lifetime. And let the Most High come back first. And do it in good health. Do it in good health. And most of all, doing it unto him. In Yahshua's name we pray. Come on, give it for the men of Israel, amen. Let us all stand. As we say, our declaration of faith, following our declaration of faith, we're going to have uh, Sister Jean. Sister Jean going to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Following our declaration of faith, uh, Sister Jean will pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Hear Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. 
And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be upon thy heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thy house, when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand, and they shall be at front between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them with the posters of thy house and upon thy gates. Hallelujah. Most holy and everlasting Father. Yes, God. We thank you for this day. Bring us to a new, another new year. Yes. We thank you for looking over all our faults and meeting our needs for the new year. We thank you, everybody that's present here today. We thank you for the, we thank you to bless the, for the, the blessing of a Jerusalem. Yes. For the new year. In our son Jesus' name, amen. Amen, 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 amen. Amen. This time, uh, the yeshiva, and the yeshiva age. Or well, anybody standing in the gap for yeshiva age child, Father Yah, I pray that you bless him in Yahshua's name. Father Yah, I pray that you bless him in Yahshua's name. Father Yah, I pray that you bless who she stands in the gap for in Yahshua's name. Father Yah, I pray that you bless who he stands in the gap for in Yahshua's name. So he blessed them that day, saying, By you, Israel will bless, saying, May God make you as Ephraim and as Manasseh. And thus he set Ephraim before Manasseh. May the Lord protect and defend you. May he always shield you from shame. May you come to be in Israel a shining name. May you be like Ruth and Boaz. May you be deserving of praise. Strengthen them, O Lord, and keep them from the stranger's ways. May God bless you and grant you long lives. May he send you someone who will care for you. May the Lord protect and defend you. May the Lord preserve you from pain. Favor them, O Lord, with happiness and peace. Oh, hear our Sabbath prayer. Amen. 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 Offering time, offering time, those who need envelopes, raise your hand, make it known, someone can give you an envelope, that you may place your offering in as we begin the beginning of this Greco-Roman year, but not the beginning of our covenant year. Yeah. Now read your passage of scripture. If you can be encouraged, continue to give unto the Lord. Um, <clears throat> for he is the source. You wouldn't you wouldn't work for a company. You you would not go to a company that you're not working for and ask them for some substance or you deserve it. Leviticus chapter 27 and verse 30 it says a tenth of your prod 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 produce of the land for the grain or fruit is the Lord's and is holy. And Proverbs twenty, Proverbs three and verse nine, it says, "And honor the Lord with your wealth, and with the first fruit of your crop." So, 
That means both those scriptures, one is talking about, you know, honoring the Lord with your with uh <coughs> with your your produce. The one says a tenth and the other one says honoring it with with he what he has blessed you with. Because the first fruit is the crop of the Lord. Amen. So you have prepared your offering. You can bring them forth now. And uh, as we sing, come on and bless Yahweh with me. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Come on and bless Yahweh with me. 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 Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Amen. All right, let us pray. Father, we bless you and we thank you, Lord, and for keeping us, Lord, through this past year as we look at the calendar. Of, and, Lord, you have caused us to be here on this uh, great day, the beginning of uh, this 2022. Uh, and, Father, we just thank you. Continue to bless us and cause us, Lord, to walk in your ways, Lord, and to be a blessing as we go forth to be a blessing unto others as we come in contact with. And we offer up this gift with praises and the blowing of the shofar. <laughs> All those that are able, thank you, sir. If you could stand with your Bibles in your hand or whatever you have your Bible on in your hand, or repeat after me this is my Bible, the Word of God, the sword of the Spirit, the Word of Faith. I'm careful how I hear it, very careful how I hear it, and careful what I do with it. In Yeshua's name. Father, Yahweh, we bless you. We thank you for your presence. Pray to teach us by your spirit. Your name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Shalom alaikum to everyone. Shalom alaikum to everyone. Shalom alaikum to everyone. Amen. 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 I do bless the Most High for being here. Thank God for my wife and her absence. And I know we saw I know we saw the cash app up there um, uh, that we had up there earlier minutes ago. For those that are watching by way of Zoom and Facebook, um, you know we we're in this beautiful building. 
this temple. Come on, give God a hand, copy man. This temple of the Most High, and we thank God that the lights are on. It feels comfortable in here for the temperature, um, you know, and um, the water. I just went to the restroom, Sister Jean, and the water's working. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Brother Sam, I uh, saw some paper towels on the, on the sink there that you can wipe your hands off, you know, and dry your hands with paper towel. You ain't got to go like this. <laughs> Amen. You ain't got to go like this. How many of y'all been somewhere, like in a rest bathroom somewhere, and, and you look around, ain't no paper towel, ain't no, no and you got to go like, you got to kind of like go like this. And Lord knows you ain't want to touch the dough. So you, so I, sometimes, this ain't a good thing. Sometimes I don't need to do one lock. I just do, I just make it quick. So I can, you know, you know I, I'm just, <laughs> hey, but I say, <laughs> quick, quick. Because you don't want to turn, you know, you don't want to turn on knock. This is, y'all, I know me. But anyhow, I say all that in this context, you know, uh, you know, uh, See, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. But see, that takes, dis- that takes discipline. See? See, that, that takes discipline. And, I, and I'm not that disciplined. I need, and that's good. I need to. I never thought about that. That's good. That's a good point. I never thought about that. But, um, but we thank God that we are doing good here at Bethany Shore. Come on, give God a hand up, man. He has given us the power to get wealth. Amen? To establish his covenant. His covenant to win souls, to deliver, to save, to live, and to set free. And that's what we are set out to do. So continue to be faithful in your giving. Continue to be faithful in your giving. I'm not saying it because all the money comes to y'all. Everybody in here, we get that community statement. Y'all know exactly how much love y'all love me with. I'm fine with that. I'm happy with that. Matter of fact, y'all done hooked the old boy up. So I'm not, I'm not saying it, you know, for any agenda, but I'm just saying it because we appreciate everyone in their faithfulness and their giving, and because um, you're giving to the Most High, you're giving to the Most High, and um, the beautiful thing about this community, everybody knows where every, every dime goes. You're supposed to know. There should be no hidden secret stuff. Amen. Got kind of quiet in here. Y'all want secrets? <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> but last week, uh, let's keep uh, uh, Gabby in prayer, um, Apostle Moss um, in prayer. I think it's ch- I think it's children doing better, right? Have you ever heard from Gabby and Apostle Moss? Have you heard from them? Um, okay, let's definitely keep them in prayer. Um, um, prayerfully, and I know they're doing they're doing better, much better for their health. So we just uh, thank God for a complete recovery, for complete healing. And Father Yah, we pray right now in Yahshua's name, Lord God, for anyone, Lord God, that I did not mention by name. You know exactly who they are. And for those that I did mention my name, Yahweh, we pray that you will touch their bodies. You are the true and living God, Yahweh Rapha, who heals. By your stripes, they are already healed, Yeshua. So we thank you for the healing that has begun and for the healing that will continue. And we thank you for the success and complete healing of their bodies. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Last week, I believe Apostle Moss was uh, beginning, he was sharing. Last week, and he was opening up. And at one point, he got into talking about um, different things people do in the ministry. And um, I don't know if he gave this example, but I know he was touching on, you know, different ones like, you know, taking care of this and taking care of that and, you know, overseeing this. And, And... it blessed me when he was sharing that 
and I kind of touched on a little bit last week, but we're going to continue to zero in on it more closely today. Let's go to Matthew chapter 25. For the Hebrew speakers, I think you pronounce his name what? Is it Mattathiah or something like that? Say it again. Mattathiahu. You know, you got to throw those Hebrew words out there every now and again. You know, you gotta, so then you got to do that sometime, especially in what audience you're talking to. They want you to. They want you to say some Hebrew words. Amen. <laughs> I'm proud of you. What, what, what's our young brother's name? What's his name? Huh? Dale. Get God to hang up with Dale again. Dale. Dale. Dale came with Dale and, and, and started hitting on that on that on that drum, man. I said, okay, that's what's up. Amen. See, he's not a child, but you're gonna understand when I say it like this. We got to have childlike faith. I've, that we got to have childlike faith and stay humble. There are some that have, they have become so learned and they don't learn themselves out of the scriptures. Meaning they don't walk away from Yeshua. Because they didn't stay humble. They didn't stay close to the most high. They, they didn't stay in that, in that teachable frame of mind. So they don't study themselves without the scriptures. So we thank God for ones that continue no matter what age they are to have a childlike faith. Amen? So let's just make sure we keep that. Amen. Let's go to Matthew chapter 25 verse 14 through 30 and this passage here is going to be talking about the uh, talents. And um, I don't know if you did you write the book down? Okay, here we go. Yeah. A lot of the, what you're going to see on the PowerPoint, uh, it's going to come out of this book right here called Word Meaning in the New Testament. Word Meaning in the New Testament by Ralph, I think it's Earl. So, so some of the commentary, some of the information that we're going to see is coming out of that source right there, not from me directly. So, the Most High has an assignment for each one of us. Those watching by way of Facebook and Zoom, the Most High has an assignment for you as well. We're living in a season, we're living in a day and time that things seem kind of cloudy. Like right now, it's kind of cloudy outside. And I think Lot would testify that we're in a season that seemed kind of cloudy because uh, uh, this is what I heard. I haven't looked at the statistics. I haven't looked at, you know, the polls, nothing like that. But I heard that, sad to say, that some in the church world is not holding on to their faith. Some in the Christian and maybe even Hebrew, Hebrew circle as well are not holding on to their faith. And a lot of it has to do with this season that is upon the world. But how many of y'all know that this isn't a time to start stepping backwards? This is a time to turn it up. I said, Jay, ain't talking about that turn up. No, some people talk on that. I ain't even I say turn up now. Some people are going down the street with a turn up. Y'all know? I ain't talking about that kind of turn up to my. Now I turn up too now. I, I, I do turn up sometimes. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm going to say some stuff for off, off the social media. <laughs> amen, amen. 
My wife said I talk too much. Huh? They can see. Yeah. The wife said I talk too much. Now she don't say it like that though, but but anyhow, so this is not a time to get last This is not a time to um but the Bible said, let's go, let, 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 let's go, let's go here. If you get it before I get it, make sure I go ahead. Falling away. Let me see if we're gonna go with it. Uh, let's go. Let me see where we're gonna be at. Uh, yeah, here we go. Here we go. Let's go to Second Thessalonians. Let's go, let, 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 let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and um, Second Thessalonians chapter two, and we're gonna begin reading at verse one and bring us on down to verse number three. Because though it's sad to hear what's being said, though it may be an element of truth to what's being said, is for some. Not contending for the faith. Not continue to press for the mark of what? Come on now, y'all. Come on now. Press for what? The mark of the high call, which is of who? Christ Yeshua or Jesus. Sad to say, some may have stepped back from that. God forbid. Because that's, that's, that's the most, that's, Hell on earth. That's, that's you walking in eternal death, though you're still walking in the physical earth. You just ain't stepped into the eternal death yet. The literal eternal death. If you don't step away from Messiah, you are walking around a dead man. Waiting to go into a, another realm of your death. Eternal death. So there ain't no time of, it ain't no time to start walking away. There ain't no time to start throwing in a towel. It's time to start more working those abilities that God gave you. It's time to start working those abilities that God gave you and the more. Turning it up in those areas. Come on, let's read. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, mm -hmm. beginning at verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh huh. And by our gathering together unto him. Yes. Verse 2. That ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter, as from us. Okay, so now, during that day and time, he's telling his audience not to let things shake them. See, back then, you know, a lot of people was concerned about, see, back then, they was, a lot of people back then, they wasn't looking at 2020, well, 2022 now, you know. Hey, hey, I saw y'all last year. They won't think about 2022 and the cares of 2022, COVID, Corona, variant number what now we on? They won't think about nothing. And, 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 and I'm not saying it lightly because y'all know I, I, had, I had caught the COVID. So I'm not making a joke about that because that stuff's real. Don't catch and find out. <laughs> it's real. It's real. So 
what I'm trying to say is they in their time was not looking at the cares and problems and issues of our day. They were looking at problems and issues of their day. Expecting and waiting Messiah to come and um, some of you may, you know, may have been wrongly taught that he had came. So a lot of people thinking that they'd have missed it and all that kind of stuff. All oh, that's going on back then because you have false teachers and everything back then. Remember said Christ said, if, you, if they say you see him over there, Go over there. He said, no, no. He said stuff like that because they had so many false messiahs to come during that day and time that people like all over the place trying to follow whoever. And then some people follow this false person. They get killed and they realize, okay, he want the real messiah. He want the true messiah. So then when another messiah comes, they ain't going to be too quick to follow that one because that one want the real one. So that's why messiah walking on earth. He said, look, can you tell me plainly? He's walking on earth and amongst, amongst his followers, they said, look, man, come on, man. We see you walking on water. We see you turning water into wine. We see you doing, can you tell us plainly, are you the Messiah? Come on now. Tell us plainly, are you the Messiah? Why? Because they had seen so, miracles during, during first century, during biblical days, it was kind of like, I'm going to say the norm. Spiritual realm, them, them, them seeing spirits and stuff. I don't want to see that stuff here. No, sir. They can have that. <laughs> they, can, they can have all that. But I'm trying to say the spiritual realm and, and, and the miracles and, and the healing, I mean, because, because they were that much more closer to Yahweh. Come on now. Like in the older covenant, the prophet like Samuel. Prophesying something going to happen, and and it's and it, and it, and it happened. It, it happened. It happened. It happened. And see, cause remember the, the biblical. The Bible said they had seers. S e e r seers. They were first called seers, then called prophets. A seer is a prophet, but a seer, a seer, is one that could not only give a prophetic word. But he or she could see it. That makes sense? Okay, you may have a lot of prophets today that prophesy and do and prophet them biblical day to prophesy, but a lot of but everybody wasn't wasn't a seer, meaning they, they they not only spoke what thus said the most high, but they saw it like I see you in here. Some other prophets during biblical days. They would prophesy what the Most High gave them to speak, but they didn't necessarily see it like I see you all right now. I pray that makes sense. So they had a lot of those back then. I say all that to say this. These people was, 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 was walking and flowing in this kind of capacity because they had a relationship with Yahweh that was untouchable. You want to be like Abraham. But we committed like Abraham. Are we sold out like the patriarchs and the matriarchs? Are we sold out like them? Because to, to, to step into that realm of, of, the, of the manifestation that, that we see them with, and that relationship that we see them with, that takes take sacrifice on our part. And I'm going to be transparent. I mean, I ain't committed like that. I'm going to be transparent. I mean, but what I'm, I'm saying all that to say this, that during Second Thessalonians time, they were not looking, about, looking at 2022. They're looking at what's going on during their day, expecting Messiah to come during their day. And and some of them thought they had already missed it. They thought they had already missed Messiah coming. So Paul got to write to them and tell them, you know, uh, you know, when the trump sound, the dead in Christ going to rise. So he's letting them know, look, y'all ain't missed it. It's still future. Because they had so many false teachings, so many false things coming forth, so many, so many, bad doctrine and so forth. And a lot of them was losing their 
faith, losing their, losing their trust, losing their um, accountability, walking away from it. So this is this, this the background. Come on, read. Verse 2. That ye be not soon shaken in mind mm -hmm. or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, yes. as from us, mm -hmm. as that the day of Mashiach is at hand. Yes. Verse, verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. The scripture tells us, sad to say, but the Bible's always right. It said, it said that there's going to be a falling away first. Then what is known as the son of perdition or the Antichrist, you'll see the Antichrist right there, but that's another subject uh, as far as who this is talking about. But the sad thing about it is saying that there's going to be a falling away first. I sadly report, not that I looked into it, I'm only doing like secondhand news, that I've been hearing, and my grandma used to say through the grapevine, that there has been a falling away. But I'm here to charge us and speak life into us and thank God that it won't be in our circle. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, read. Verse 4. Verse 4. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4. Who opposeth and exalt, exalt? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, that, that, that's it. That's it. So, yeah. So, thank you for saying that. That's why you asked me. I got you. So, no. So, it says that. But though the apostle whole in forms of, of that. With that being said, which is the truth, we are to turn up our assignment all the more. We are to turn the pressure up or turn our accountability or abilities up all the more. So now let's go back to Matthew 25, 14. You have to say amen. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 25, beginning at verse 14. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. Verse 15. Mm -hmm. And unto one he gave five talents. Unto one. Y'all know this is a very familiar passage. Nothing deep. Unto one he gave five talents. Everybody say abilities. I'm looking at us in here and those that may be watching by way of Facebook and Zoom. We all don't have the same abilities. Some people have more physical strength than the next person. Though I think in my mind Though I think in my mind that I could or can run faster than Tamias. <laughs> That's what I think, thank you. <laughs> No, in my mind, I remember, I remember, I remember, if, 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 yeah, I, I, try, I try to be the neighborhood good guy, and a couple of years ago, I think it was summertime, we was in front of my house, and, um, you know, we got Joe Ben, Bree, and 
their little kids, you know, growing up, they come. Our house, like, people come to chill out, that type of stuff. So I think I might have came home from work or something, and they out there in the front. Some girls, little boys out there, girls out there. So I get out the van, I think, and um, some two, couple guys that, that I knew, young guys. So they in the street racing, you know, starting and running. Come on. Now, I gave myself to be a pretty fast guy growing up. Yeah, growing up. You know, I, I had a little speed now, a little speed. Yeah, growing up. But like I said, the mind, now, I'm telling you, that mind something. <laughs> that mind something. So, you know, I get out, I get out, I start talking slick to the young guy. I'm Mr. Green, you ain't, you ain't Mr. Green, you ain't, you ain't Mr. Green. I said, okay, I'm going to show y'all something. I get out there, I take my shoes. I'm old school. Oh, yeah, I'm old school. I don't have no tennis shoes on. I slow me down. Slow me down. Took my shoes off. A dog barefooted. Old school. <laughs> look. Uh, look. <laughs> well, yeah, look. <laughs> look. I gotta, I'm going to show this young man something. I'm going to show this young man. I'm going to show this young man. I still got it. I'm going to show this young man. They, they geeking off me now. Oh, Mr. Green, like, you going to run. I said, I'm going to show you all something. Get down to the young man beside me. Got my shoes off. And I'm thinking in my mind, he can't beat me. <laughs> I'm, I'm literally thinking in my mind, y'all. I'm serious, y'all. I'm literally thinking in my mind, he cannot beat me, Sir Jean. Get down. <laughs> Get down. He right there. He, I'm right beside him. Shoes off. All the young folk watching. I said, where are we going to run to? They gave me the mark. Where are we going to stop at? I said, I got him. I got him. Because remember, I used to be kind of jive fast back in the day, a little bit. No kind of uh-huh with that. Now, that, that wasn't them. <laughs> so they go ahead and say, they, they go ahead and say, uh, 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 brother, brother Sam, they say, Mark, get set. Go, pew. I came off the gate. I ain't see him. <laughs> Got him. I ain't see him. I don't know whether he was just playing with me or what. All I know, that joke was here. Pew. I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got to the end. <sighs> got to the end. He still walking around laughing. <laughs> he ain't he ain't been over. They geeking off me. <laughs> he ready to go again. McGree, wanna run again? I'm done. I'm done. That's a true story, y'all. So it goes to show that that young man ability in that area I can touch. Come on now. He was able to do more in that ability than I would. Y'all better get this thing. So everyone in here does not have the same ability. Some of us in here are stronger than others. Some of us in here are more educated than others. Some of us in here uh, have, uh, have more finances than others. Some of us in here has more, I mean, y'all know the list goes on and on and on. Some of us in here has more, how can I say this one? Oh, uh, how can I? Y'all got to help with this one. 
you know, yeah, definitely, definitely experience. But some, some may, may not be challenged mentally, and some may be. You see where I'm coming from? We have all different kind of talents or abilities in here on social media in the, in the body of Messiah period. Everybody's not the same. Don't forget that God already knows that. It hasn't taken him by surprise that everybody not the same. <laughs> you ain't got to call him and say, God. <laughs> you ain't got to call him and say that he already knows that everybody's not the same because um, uh, he did make everybody. He made everybody, everybody is, is, everything is naked and open before him, meaning can't nothing take him by surprise. So as we get into this reading here, the question we must leave here with is, are we working or doing kingdom work for God to the best of our ability? The problem comes when you try to be like somebody else. No. No. You work with what he entrusted in you, and you bring back a hundredfold whatever that is. We're going to talk about it. Come on, read, brother. Matthew 25, verse 15. And unto one he gave five talents. Uh Uh-huh. To another two, and to another one. To every man according to his several several abilities. Ah, look at what the verse says. It tells you right there that he gives everyone according to their ability. It'd be so unfair for him to give somebody that is beyond their means to be able to handle. It be it, it'd be so unfair to he, he to give somebody an assignment that calls a certain amount of physical strength and they don't have the physical strength to do it. Physical. Mental strength to do it. Or mental ability to do it. Or financial. He, he don't work like that. But one thing he does do is no matter what state or ability you're working with, he's looking for you to work that to the best of your ability and you all, we all get the same reward. Come on. He's a fan, just Elohim. Come on, read. And unto one he gave five talents, mm-hmm. to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Verse 16. Let, Matthew, let, 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 let look at that word, several. Look at those two words. Put, put them up for me quick. Several, several abilities. Let's let, let, let look at those two Greek words there and see and see. See, see if we can pull out this definition and um, see if we can get um, a word in the definition that, that really sticks home with you personally. That makes sense? Like, like right now we have, we're looking at a translation here, and the translator chose to use the word several mm-hmm. and you chose to use the word ability, right? And that's fine. Okay. Now, somebody may get kind of shuffled with that word several and ability. So that, let's go in that Greek word to see if there's another word inside there that, that, that we could use um, to bring a more understanding to what these words mean. Come on, read. Okay. Uh, is G2398 the phonetic pronunciation is id eos. Id eos? Id eos. Id eos. Okay. Good. Idios. Idios. Okay. Okay. Uh, Thayer's definition. Pertaining to oneself, one's own, belonging to oneself. Strong's definition. Of uncertain affinity, pertaining to stuff. That is, one's own, by implication, private or separate. His acquaintance, when they were alone, Mm -hmm. apart, do his own, his proper, his several, his home, her, 
our dying, your own own business, private, privately, proper, severally, their own. So, some words that stand out there in that definition is the word own, private, proper. So you could put the word uh, own there when it says several. You can put the word proper there when it says several. So basically you can say it like this. Your own. Come on now. That makes sense. What is proper with you that you're able to do? I pray that makes sense what, what we just did right there when we went to, to, to that Greek word. So, you are to do what is properly or your own. Let, 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 let's get the word ability. Come on. Or what is private, like, like Tim would say. What is private, what, what, what is exclusive to you. Come on now. Look how good God is. Come on, look how good God is. He's a fair Elohim. Come on, read. Ability. Strong's number G1411. Phonetic pronunciation. Do na do nam e. Mm -hmm. Do na e. Do nam e. Sayer's definition. Strength, power, ability. Power. So you are to do what's in the was in your own power. Was in your own strength. Oh, come on, was that it? Nope. Come on. All right, so 1A, there's definition. Inherent power, power residing in a thing by virtue of its nature or which a person or thing exerts and puts forth. Mm. B, power for performing miracles. C, Moral power and excellence of soul. Mm -hmm. D, the power and influence which belongs to riches and wealth. E, power and resources arising from numbers. F, power consisting in or resting upon armies, forces, hosts. Strong's definition. From G1410. Uh -huh. Force, literally or figuratively, specifically, Miraculous power, usually by implication, a miracle itself. Ability, abundant, meaning, might, mightily, mighty, mighty deed, worker of miracle or miracles, power, strength, violence, mighty, wonderful work. Strength and might. He is looking for us to do in his kingdom according to our own strength, our own might, our own ability, our own powers. Not the next person, not that person, but our own. He's looking for us to take that which he has bestowed upon us, the talent, the ability, no matter what that is. And take that and increase that. Like yeast. Yeast is an increasing agent, right? Whatever you put yeast in, the dough rather, is going to increase, right? So he's looking for us to take that talent and Use it to the best of our ability, no matter what, or take that ability, take that strength, take that that you've been um, entrusted with, no matter what that may be. It could be just all you do is make phone calls. Because you can't physically leave your home. Come on now. You could be on the phone calling people to remind them about this service, about this event, See, it's always something to do. 
And when you try to do that to the best of your ability, you get the same or even a greater work of reward than somebody like myself up here up up preaching. Because you're taking what he has entrusted you according to your abilities and trying to work that the best you can. Because you can't physically leave your home like you want to. Y'all better get it. Ah. Come on, read. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, they want you to grab a mic right here, sister. <laughs> no, they're going to bring you one. They want everything on mic right here. So the question is, we're not doing that just for gain. Oh, come on. So no. if we have that ability, we're not doing that just to get something because we're looking for something, but we're doing it because he expects that. Come on. Amen. He expects that. This, 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 this right here tells us this is what he's looking for. It's not a salvation thing. It's not a salvation thing. But he's looking, he's looking, see, the most high, remember the, the, the key thing to the kingdom is souls. Souls. He's looking for souls. He, he's, looking, he's, he's looking for that which was taking place in the invisible realm to manifest here in the natural realm. See, we came out of the invisible realm worshiping, praising him, glorifying, and this is everybody, all humanity. In the invisible realm, before Adam, we was in, if I may word it like this, we was in the, in the spiritual dimension praising, worshiping Yahweh, and he wanted that to be done here on earth, but one thing, because he's fair and he's just, he gave mankind when mankind came to earth, he wanted mankind to freely choose to do that. That's why he created you in his image with the ability to choose. Some people have taken that image and not chose him, so therefore they are not doing what was in the invisible realm in the natural realm. But he never stopped wanting that. See where I'm coming from? He never stopped wanting that and desiring that, and that's where these topics come in at to try to get people to doing that because he wants the masses. So, so th this is why the parable brings out the point of he was not pleased when he took the one and didn't work with it because that, that didn't increase what he wanted. Come on, you got the hand, Yeah. Um, so when you use an ability, an ability is just potential. Really, because when you use an ability, you hone that ability, and then you have more potential. <sighs> the, the ability itself grows itself if yes. it's used. So the person who's on the phone is, is using his ability to speak to people and probably becomes much better as time goes on in speaking to people and, and uh, That's good. What, meeting, meeting, meeting them where they're at. That's good. That's excellent. Did y'all get that? Say that again. That, that, that's excellent. Say that, say that one more. I, 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 I be think, I think, did y'all hear that message Malak did? Uh, when she talking about the, um, the, uh, the, the wine skin? That was so good. <laughs> that was so and she And she broke it down like a coat. And this is her message, but it just blessed me. I heard, you know, who going to take a brand new, who going to take an a, a old coat or a brand new coat and put a piece of a piece of uh, cloth uh, into the because you use the coat as an example, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, to uh, garments and to wineskins. Right, yeah. But 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 the way the way you the way you shared that thing, it was the way you shared it was like he was the way the way you presented. I never heard it like that when you were saying that he was like the people like, man, how ridiculous is that? <laughs> That was good. I really liked it. But they, go ahead. They take a piece of the new coat and patch up the old. Right. Is that, that, that's really what scripture says. And and and, and, and the way she brought that out, that's another message, but that's her message she brought. The way she tied it in was, you know, the people were like, man, that's just like I like it because the way she presented it, she presented with putting you back in that day and time. Like, man, that's that's you just don't do that. 
But I ain't doing no just the way she taught it. But anyhow, but go, but go ahead and say that again a lot. Say, say, say okay. that again what you're saying about so the growing. So ab ability is what we can see in a person. Mm -hmm. But potential is what they can tap when they use the ability. Come on. Because it constantly grows like the yeast in the bread. Beautiful, beautiful. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So we see him. Okay, now let, let, let's go back to the verse. Verse 16. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. Uh huh. Verse 17. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. Verse 18. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and laid his Lord's money. Verse 19, after a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. So we know that the Messiah is coming back, right? And reckoning, what does that word reckoning mean there in the Greek, sir? Scenario mm -hmm. um, to take up together with another or others. Number two, to mm -hmm. bring together with others, to cast up or settle accounts, be uh. to make a reckoning with. To settle what? Accounts. Okay, that's good. I'm going to hold up with that. Now go, go back to the reading scripture. Verse 19, after a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. Verse 20, and so he had, he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained besides them five talents more. Mm -hmm. Verse 21, his Lord said unto him, well done, thou good and faithful servant, Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. You see, you see what he was told? And you see how it was worded? How they word it again? He said what? Well done. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. So the Most High or this, this traveling man here, he knew that this person here was able to take those five and make five more. And he did it. See that? He's not going to, he's not going to give somebody five and expect them to do 20. He, I mean, and expect them to do 20. If they did 20, that'd be great. All the more, the more, the better. But he gave them the ability to what they was able to do. Come on, read. Verse 22. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. Mm -hmm. Verse 23. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Both of them received the same what? Wording. I pray that makes sense. The one who received got ten total or got the five extra. His wording wasn't, you know, wasn't like an extra couple words in that in the other one. They both received the same gratitude, received the same pat on the back. Because why? They took what they was able to do and they increased with that. I pray this makes sense. Hallelujah. They were good and faithful with what their lot was. They were good and faithful with what they were entrusted to do. If you're given an assignment, 
Work that assignment to the best of your ability. And the one who knows, the one who knows if they're doing it or not is God and that person. Everybody else on the outside looking in. But really the ones who really know if you are, if you are trying to work that to the best of your ability is the most high and yourself. Come on, read. Verse 24. Mm-hmm. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. Mm-hmm. Verse 25. And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. How many, how many of y'all have given, maybe you had somebody work for you or doing something for you, and you gave them a particular assignment for a work, task, or whatever, and they do that, and then they take the initiative to go a step further, and you didn't even ask them. You come back to the job like, oh, snap, man, I, man, I praise. Because they saw something that needed to be addressed. They saw something that needed to be dealt with or handled or taken care of. They didn't get on the phone necessarily to blow your phone up or call you. They went ahead and knew that they ain't going to do that for you because this is something that needs to be done. And they got the ability, the means to do it. And they know that it will please you and make you look good, all that kind of stuff. Then when you get back, you're like, yes, oh, snap, I got to hook you up for that. Why? Because they did what you told them to do, and then something else came along. They did when they took the initiative to go ahead and take care of that, looking out for your better interest. You tell me, you tell me that don't go a long way with you. And now, now you go ahead and get them what you going to get them, and you don't mind, you have no problem with giving them a hookup. Because they, cause you know they thought about you. And not just because they thought about you, but that bless you. That help you out. It's a matter of beautiful thing. You get some other assignment, you got to go back behind them. Well, get me these guys. Got me some guys. That, yeah, I can do that. I can do that. See, that ain't their ability. <laughs> That's why I ask guys sometimes, I tell them, I say, look, please tell me this. Tell me what it is you can do. I'm, y'all think I'm joking. I say, tell me what it is you can do, and you ain't got to worry about, I mean, this This something you know for sure you can do. And you ain't got to me coming behind you or looking over you. or do, you, you can do this without no question, this is what you can do. Some guys that say some stuff that they clearly cannot do. Just to get the job, just to get their work. And now you got to go behind them when they glue a pipe together and they use the wrong glue. Then water them bust. Because they're they not plumbers for real. But they tell you that. That was not their ability. Come on, let's read. Verse 26, his Lord answered and said unto him, Yes. Thou wicked and slothful servant. Oh, my God. Thou knowest that I reap where I sowed not, mm-hmm. and gather where I have not strawed. Mm-hmm. Verse 27, thou artest, there artest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Mm-hmm. Verse 28. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which have ten talents. Mm-hmm. Verse twenty nine. For unto every one that hath sh- that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. Verse thirty. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. This shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Amen. It seems altogether proper for us to use this parable in emphasizing the fact that we are stewards of our God-given talents or abilities. 
if we use them, they will increase, like Malak was saying. If we do not use them, we are wicked and lazy. Can you pull, it, pull up the NIV? You got to pull the NIV real quick. Yeah, I'm, I know I'll put you on the spot with that. I, I, I want to read the NIV verse 26 to see how that's going to sound because the author got that there. So if we do not use them, the scriptures says wicked. Now y'all got a problem with that. Y'all got to hang out with the most high. I didn't put that there. <laughs> the scripture says wicked and lazy. So we're we going to get in the NIV, that verse um, 26, to see how that reads. And our fate will be out of darkness. Verse 30. Like verse 30 says. Let me get mixed up. No, 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 no. Verse 26. Verse 26 mm -hmm. in the NRV. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvested where I have not sown and gathered where I have not scattered seed. 26. Don't nobody want their master, their boss, the one that's overseeing or their one that's in the, their Lord, their, who's in charge. Nobody wants to call it, nobody wants to be called lazy. I don't think. Hope not, right? And verse 30, you're going to read verse 30 again in the King James. Verse 30, mm -hmm. Matthew 25, verse 30. Mm -hmm. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Okay. There is a practical point here also. People with limited talents or abilities are most apt to doing nothing. Some people that feel that because they are limited in what they're able to do, they feel like that there is nothing for them to do. That's not true. Come on. They feel like, okay, my finance is not like this. My health is not like this. My understanding for his intellect is not like this. I can't speak like him. I can't walk like him. I can't, I mean, I have a car. You know, you go down a list of, because they, why not? So, so when, if they get in that frame of mind, some of them say, okay, there's nothing for me to do. They tell themselves that. No. There's something for everyone to do within their ability. Don't compare yourself to somebody else. You work whatever that is. The Most High is watching you. Here we go. There is a practical point here also. People with limited talents, abilities, are most apt to do nothing. As Christian workers, we need to watch for these and encourage them to use what they have. Come on now. Encourage them to use what they have. Encourage them to do what they're able to do within their means. Example, if somebody is home paralyzed from the waist or from the head down, y'all in them chairs or whatever, but he or she can still talk or still, you know, can still talk and it's something that person can do. They can use that voice, like I said earlier, they can find a way to call, like I said earlier, call somebody by a voice activated system in their house or whatever. Or the ministry can find some kind of, the ministry they're part of, whatever, can set some up in their house and we got lights that you speak to and they come on and off. You know, you, you, we got, I see commercials that go like this and lights come on and go off. I mean, meaning, meaning it's a, <laughs> I'm just trying to say that there is, but see, the, sometimes the problem, and I got both of your hands, is when we don't encourage somebody 
that there's something that they can do. Every joint supplies. It may not be like the next person. It could be definitely praying for, for sure. It could be, it could be, you could be home just folding up programs. Don't you see the most I see you doing that? Y'all. Oh my God, man. Is the most I know that all you can do is fold up a program. You don't think he's making a note of that and you're going to get the same or greater reward than some nasty known preacher? You are doing to the best of your ability. Come on, you had your hand. I'm going to let her go first. And then I die. I know a couple. I know a couple like that, and his, he's a pastor, and his wife is in a. She she's not able to do anything, but she's a cast out, and they and because they keep saying that they need to keep the television, they made the television. She what, what she would do, she would c talk to people, and. Yeah. Come on, exactly. She didn't let her be in a cast. Stop her from doing something. You don't think that go? You don't think the most high? You don't think that's being written in the book of remembrance? You know the Bible says it's a book of remembrance, man. Everything being recorded. Come on, dog. What I was going to say is um, I think it's sometimes that we don't struggle with having the thought or potential or the ability to do it. I think we struggle with how and having the knowledge to do. I think we all given, we can kind of see things we can possibly do, but how to carry that out and ask for help, I think that's probably the biggest struggle. Like you was mentioning about the person that um, may be paralyzed, but then be a uh, the, you know, in her home. Well, they may not know how to act uh, um, actually work social media, mm. but is able to, to, if somebody else knows how to do social media can go and set that thing up for that person um, but that person may not even ask for that they might be in their mind or you know today you can do a meme and just write a you Come can on. have a whole list of things that you can you uh, they won't even know it's you you can just literally go on your phone put a little background on it and write a nice scripture or word or of encouragement and just post it but a lot of people just don't know how to access, or um, I think the struggle is more of how to do it, not can I do it or, mm. or, or something I can focus on. I think everybody in here can say, I can do this for God, but how, how? and who do I connect with That's good. to get it done? You know, we, we are quiet folk to be about kingdom, you know, <laughs> and we don't, what I, my, my ability is, I can show you how to get it get in contact with social media, right? But the next person, may, I can show that person they have the platform to do it, set it up, show them how to operate it, and it's successful. But if a person never comes to you, come to me and say, or even know I have that ability, mm -hmm. won't do that. And I think that it's all, the way, it, it, it's for me, it's the not, the not knowing how to or, or being afraid to ask for the additional help that you may need for your particular ministry. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's a good point. Yes. Um, I um, I look at this scripture maybe like in I want to look at it maybe like in a, in a different format. I say, know that right or not? But I, I'll I'll. Well, follow me as I look at it. Okay, so first we see that this is this is a man, and these are his servants, right? So then we know that if they are his servants, he also know what their ability are, what they can do. Uh, and it goes back to something you said earlier that that uh, the Lord won't give us that to do. What we cannot do. Amen. Okay. So we got one, two, three, three sets of people there. One got five, one got three, and one got one. So everybody that had the, the two, the, the, the five, they 
made increase. The three that made an increase. Uh, all the two. All right. But the one that had one, he started off with, I know that you is a hard uh, uh, master. And so, so he knew. Mm -hmm. He knew his servant. I mean, he, he, master, he, yeah. he knew his master. Yeah, right. But I believe his, his problem here was that he was not willing to follow the instruction that his master had maybe taught him before he, you know, because, you know, if I had somebody working for me and they just just started the first day working with me, I wouldn't give them a hundred dollars and tell them go to the store <laughs> and spend, you know, X yeah. amount of dollars and come back, you know? No, but um, I think that is the problem there because uh, he wouldn't have called him a wicked mm. and lazy or slothful servant if he didn't know if he didn't knew this know to know this man and so the the talents help us to see uh you know god want us to be to be to be uh Walk in, walk wow. in our ability. Yeah. You know, work in our ability, and as she said, as as we 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 do it, then He will cause that to be increased Amen. in us. What we can do. Beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. Lock your head, some. I, I was honing in on that next verse. The, the the third servant with the one talent says, "Reaping where you didn't sow." Well, he he sowed one talent into him <laughs> yeah, that's good. and gathering yeah, where yeah. you scattered no seed yeah. so his attitude toward the master is the problem uh, come uh, on. you know so I was afraid um, and, and, and I think that what you were talking about what a Christian worker should do well one thing we should do is teach the true character of God mm, hallelujah and, and not let people think about, oh, he just, you know, I'm afraid to do something wrong or whatever. And uh, you said when you first began this ministry, I'm going to make mistakes. Yeah. That's just the way it is. That's I'm going to make mistakes. And that encouraged us to do what we could do with our abilities because we were going to make mistakes. too. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Verse 21, 23, King James. Uh -huh. Matthew chapter 25 verse 21 and 23 mm -hmm. okay. his Lord said unto him well done thou good and faithful servant thou hast been faithful over a few things I will make thee ruler over many things enter thou into the joy of thy Lord verse 23 his Lord said unto him well done good and faithful servant thou hast Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Thank you, sir. The commendation is exactly the same in both places. The KJV, thou in italic, though in italics, is an obtrusion in verse 21. We will not be rewarded by the Lord on the basis of how much we have done. Look at this. We will not be rewarded by the Lord on the basis of how much we have done, but on how well we have used the talents or the abilities he has given us. Come on now. Only two things are required of us that we do, or that we be good and faithful, and the reward for good work is more work. That, that, was that, that, was that the Read that last line again. Only two things are required of us. That we be good and faithful. These are not my words. These are words of this, of this book here. And the reward for good work is more work. And that's like Malak was saying earlier. The more and more you do it, you get, you, you, you get more comfortable you get more relaxed, you get more familiar with it, and that gets into more what? Assignments. And like you said earlier, like you said, not looking for rewards or doing it for reward, it just automatically comes with it. 
Yeah. I'm gonna be real right now. Oh. Um, am I the only human that doesn't understand? <laughs> And I don't mean this in any, I love what I do, who I am, and all of that. But the question still remains in my brain. How is it the ones who are good and faithful are overworked? <laughs> while the wicked and the slothful sit around and continue to be that way? And I don't, I don't necessarily mean this in, like, the Christian world because I'm not concerned about what other servants are doing and how they're doing it and how much they're doing. But I guess mine is more in the workplace. You know, because at work, I'm great, I'm known, I'm, you know, oh, Tammy can do it. Whatever it is, Tammy can do it. But I've gotten to a place where I don't want to do it. Like, forget that I even know how to do it. Because the more I do, the more oh, good yeah. I am, the more faithful I am, the more that is put on you. You know what I'm saying? Not, and please, Lord, don't take me. I'm not complaining. I'm just trying to understand. <laughs> well, I'm going to just answer your question based upon the biblical principle. The biblical principles are what they are, regardless of where you, where, wherever. You, <laughs> I'm, I'm in the same boat. Like, like, don't give it to me. You do it. <laughs> Parable, you know, don't give the man the fish. Mm -hmm. Teach him how to fish. Well, then they still act like they don't know how to do it. And then I find myself saying, well, didn't I just show you how to do this two days ago? Or, you know, so I just wanted to be real and get it out of my brain amongst my family. So now I feel better. Thank you. <laughs> I also wanted to add to his um, answer, and that is probably that if you don't get these teachings, if they don't hear this, as Nasi is doing today, and sometimes it needs to be a continuous teaching for mm -hmm. it to get down in the person's spirit. Mm -hmm. So to, you can read this and just bypass all those words, but to stay there to study that, you know, even if it was an hour of just that teaching, because I'm sure we all have gotten something today as much as we think we know. Mm -hmm. We still learn something here in this today. So... And I feel you on that. I, uh, church I attended, I felt like I was doing over and above. But I didn't want to become bitter, but I did. Mm, wow. And so, and I know that's where he don't want us to no, be. No, no, no. Mm -mm. Yeah, but then the key word is what is the ability? We can't expect someone, no matter how much we teach, to do something they don't have the ability to do. They won't stay with it, I don't think. Amen. Well, let's leave here today uh, trusting the Most High to take the ability, the talent that he gave us and bring back a hundredfold. Of course, the kingdom assign assignment for most important of all. That's not to say you don't put have a secular job. No, y'all don't get it twisted. You gotta, you know, you gotta, you gotta work. But um, definitely, def <laughs> definitely, you know, because uh, it says seek ye first the kingdom. So, so therefore, uh, what, what, what we take, we take these talents, and we definitely uh, use them toward the kingdom first, and it automatically gonna trickle over into our secular. Um, but the king, he says, seek ye first. That means seek the kingdom things first and apply them there. And they're going to automatically trickle over into, because remember, remember, remember the day of atonement. 
those two, remember? Y'all remember, y'all remember the teaching? Those two goats was identical. Remember the teaching was not have more secular, most, most have on the balance. If, if anything going to increase, it's going to be the spiritual. Y'all know. Y'all, y'all already know how it goes. Yes, I, I'm trying. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I, yeah, one more. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to work with you. Um, I was thinking something you said earlier about uh, one of our main goals is to go out and win souls. We should be soul winning, winners. How do you know when you want a soul? Oh, okay. Well, at the end of the day, excellent question. Excellent question. What we had the assignment to do, I'm just going to give you a short, quick answer. We had the assignment to, I'm going to paraphrase it. We have a, the assignment to uh, plant. Somebody else may water. And God will get an increase. So we witness in, we're out here, and we uh, lead the people to the most high. That could be the planting. We don't have the ability, and I know you're not saying this, we don't have the ability or the authority, or to know whether that person, um, you know, what, what, at that point in time, that if you lead somebody to the Most High, and you had them to confess with their mouth, the Lord Jesus, so forth, so forth, we believe right then, according to the Scripture, that their soul is right at that moment. If they, if they, if they follow you and accept the Lord as Savior into their life, um, you know, right then, I'm going to persuade the court to the scriptures that support what I'm saying, that, that their soul is right. And then after that point, you know, you, t- you, you encourage them to go to a Bible teaching ministry that can be fed. So at that point in time that you've done that, that individual, according to my understanding of scripture, understanding the scripture they, are, they, are, they are what you want to call save, a saved individual. And so let, let, let's say, let's, okay, let, here we go. Let's say if I'm walking about. And this is me, and this is the individual. And me witnessing this person here, I'm talking to the person. And some of that conversation, I said, you know, hey, man, you know, if you take your last breath right now, you know, what would you spend eternity? It, 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 there's, no, there's no set formula, no set way. You know and, 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 and they conversating with you, you know, you know I'm, I'm not, you know, saved, but I will go to hell. And he may say, do you want to go to hell? You know, I don't know how you, you may word it differently. So in that conversation, if, if you wind up and they, and they say, well, uh, yeah, you can pray with me and I do want to accept the Most High, accept Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, you can lead that person to the Lord right then. Right then, you lead them to the Lord, ask them to repent and accept Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, at that moment because they confessed it. They confessed with their mouth and believed in their heart. At that point in time that they confessed and believed and accepted them, they are saved, sold is right according to the Scripture. At that moment, then once y'all depart ways, prayerfully that person will stay with the Most High and go get fed and get nourished, and somebody will come back and water that, and God get an increase. Okay, so that, that'll be. It. Father God, we bless you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your truth. Thank you for this Shabbat, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that we, Lord God, the talents and the abilities that you gave us, Lord God, we pray, Lord God, that, that we are using them, Lord God, to the best of our ability. Lord God, that we bring back a hundredfold. Whichever one you lighted upon us to work with, we pray that we bring back double. That when you return, you see us working. And we offer unto you, Lord God, double with that which you gave us. So, Father, we know, Lord God, that you know exactly what that is in everyone's life, no matter what it is. So, Lord God, we pray, Lord God, that we remain faithful. Lord God, we remain diligent and committed to your kingdom work. In your sure name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, yes. Okay, Tamias, gotta go back to school. Yeah. All right. Come on up here, young man. We're gonna pray for Tamias. You can cut that light on the dog. Father God, I bless and I thank you for Tamias. God, I bless and I thank you, Lord God, for him being a fine young man in your kingdom. Father, I pray your shalom continue to rest upon him. 
So I pray, Lord God, he continue, Lord God, to walk in your will, your way, your character, your desire. And Father, we bless you. We thank you, Lord God, that you bless him to come home, Lord God, and visit his family, Lord God, through this break. And Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, that as he goes back to the school, Lord God, he go back, Lord God, Lord God, with an encouragement in his heart, Lord God, to live for you, to serve you like never before, Lord God, to be, Lord God, to even use, Lord God, be used by you in the talents you bestowed upon him to be that light, Lord God, amongst those that he come across in his school. We bless you. We thank you, Lord God, for all the doors that you opened for this young man, all the opportunities. We thank you, Lord God, that his dreams, Lord God, Lord God, being manifest, Lord God, Lord God, right before our eyes. Lord God, we pray, Lord God, that he just be always careful to give you all the thanks, the glory, and the honor for all that you are doing and all that you're going to do. In your sure name we pray. Amen. 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 And we have our brother Sam. Brother Sam has let it be known that he wanted to be a, become a part of Beth Yeshua for all people. <laughs> Amen. So we're going to ask if y'all know how we do. Y'all can put your mask on and come on up here. And uh, come on up here, um, Brother Sam. We're just going to hug on you. And that's, that's our way of uh, welcoming you into our community of Beth Yeshua. Amen. Brother Sam said he wanted to be a... Oh, amen, amen, amen. Come on up here. Amen. We pray the Lord. Ain't that something? Oh, right. Amen. 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 We praise God. Well, um, I'm a, um well, we 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 we, we just gonna hug on you. And this is our way of just just uh welcome you. Thank God for you, thank God for you. Amen. That was a pleasant surprise. God bless you. Bless you. That, that was a hey, that was good there. Amen. 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 Come on, get God a hang of it. Amen. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Amen. All right, we're gonna have our community um our community prayer. Let's have our community prayer. Um Amen, 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 amen. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, the present surprise is brown. Amen. Amen, amen. Now, 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 now that y'all have, this ain't to scare y'all off now. Don't, don't, don't start running, Sam, Mr. Brown. Now, now that y'all, you know, have openly show that you want to be a part of the community, now, now y'all can be asked upon certain ways now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, now, now, yeah I, hope, I hope that makes sense. I mean, I, now, 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 you can be, now you can be approached a little bit differently now. Amen, amen, amen. So, yes, here we go. Kingdom prayer, a petition to the heavenly court. Declaring a ceasefire in our communities. Father, we thank you for completely washing away our guilt and cleansing us of our transgressions. We thank you for the commission to stand in your authority to subdue the earth with your principles that the earth may be restored with justice. Thank you, Father, for allowing us to stand as kings and priests after the order of Melchizedek, for you are a just God who stands and delivers. There is none beside you. We proclaim a ceasefire in the nations and the great revival of Torah. Thank you for being the supreme Sophat judge who maintains our cause for the afflicted and justice for the poor. We thank you for whenever your judgments are in the earth, the heavens learn righteousness. Thank you for hearing our voice when we cry out to you. We stand as heirs of the Abrahamic covenant. We petition on behalf of the bloodshed of the innocent. We declare a ceasefire. Our Father, you said that if you don't shamar, keep the city, watchmen will watch in vain. We ask you to watch the cities of Petersburg, or Hopewell, Richmond, and the surrounding counties. They have been plagued with the shedding of innocent blood. We declare a ceasefire. We ask you, O Adonai, to come out of your place to punish the murderers in their iniquities and cause the earth to disclose the blood of the innocent that justice may be served. 
You said not to kill the innocent and righteous, and you declared there is no justification for the wicked. You said you hate the soul of the one who loves violence. You declared that the soul of the one who takes a bribe to slay an innocent person is cursed. You said you hate the soul of the one who divides wicked plans. We ask that you rule in favor of the innocent blood crying out in the streets, innocent blood like Abel's. Uncover those who have shed innocent blood. May they be governed by your laws and be delivered by the purity of our hands. We declare a ceasefire. As you have commanded us to petition for peace, that we may have peace in the nations, we declare your shalom in the cities where you have people have been exiled. We come in agreement with your heart and trust that we will not leave empty-handed. We believe that you will act for your name's sake, act for uh, sanctuary's sake, your sanctuary's sake, act for your Torah's sake, and act for your right hand's sake, that your beloved ones will find rest in you. In your lifestyle, we live. Amen. Amen. In announcements. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Very quickly, uh, shifting the atmosphere prayer, January 8th, 2022, 9 a.m. to 9.45 a.m., prayer meditations, guiding you through the meditative process for an enriching transformation experience and hearing his voice. We also have the Living Olive Bet class today at 3.30 p.m. And according to the calendar, Malak, it's tomorrow evening. So I don't know if you saw it differently somewhere. Uh, Rosh Kadesh, or uh, New Moon, is tomorrow evening, January 2nd. And what time? Um, 7 o'clock. 7 p.m., January 2nd, Rosh Kadesh. And that's all I have, unless you have something else. Uh, yes. Um, we do... Uh, um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not still on social media. 